Chapter 1, The Beginning Bye, let's go. We're going to be late for school, Diana chided. She tossed her blonde hair over her shoulder and looked at me. So, it's Halloween, she exclaimed in delight, as if it was a fact everyone should know about. Diane, my fifteen-year-old sister, did a little dance around the room. Her bright blue eyes sparkled with glee. A bright smile illuminated her face. I rolled my eyes. I couldn't believe she was making such a fuss over such a trivial matter. Oh, goody, how I couldn't I ever forget the worst celebration on the planet. I was a sixteen years old. I was a seventeen years old. And being a high school student was anything but fun. The final exams were fast approaching. I was studying very hard since I wanted to pass into a great college and finally leave this town. On top of the stress, I had to deal with this ridiculous celebration. Halloween seemed so fake, unfortunately. I lived in a town where they celebrated with elaborate decorations of parties, witches and broomsticks, skeletons and vampires. They were not real, just fairy tales and scary stories. I used to believe in them when I was a child, but now I was all grown up. I believed in the ugly reality, and I was more than certain that this stuff didn't exist. In fact, I was fairly certain it was an obvious trick for the merchants to take more money, since people shot like crazy. The real history of the holiday was much darker than what it had become now, as it was banishing the evil spirits and welcoming the dead among the living again. Diana, on the other hand, was in her own little world all the time and kept her dreams alive. Halloween was her favourite holiday, and that meant she would be over the moon and going all out tonight. Ugh, I was so over that stuff. Fortunately, we purchased all the things she thought we needed a couple of weeks ago, and that meant I could have some alone time to study before she dragged me to the party downtown. The city council felt obliged to throw the party every single year as it attracted choice. So my torture was constant. Of course, every year they looked for more extravagant activities, decorations, but to my eyes they all seemed silly, a waste of my time. What struck me as odd, that was all the people loved the celebration, I had to participate without exception. I couldn't be the only person to hate it. That just wasn't natural. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Bored. I cast a glance, quick glance at the mirror and found a familiar girl with olive eyes staring back at me. I ran my fingers through my olive's hair to straighten it and grabbed my school bag. I went outside while waiting for my sister and watched people going about their business. We lived in a charming little town with picturesque buildings and blue paved streets. I loved our town because it held artistic foot festivals all year round and famous artists often came to attend. But even with all these miracles around me, I wanted to leave and discover the world. The rays of sun were starting starting peek out. And I smiled. Suddenly a white spot filled my vision. I blinked. Concentrating I watched as a bunny hopped out of, on a bench. I wondered where it had come from. Not many animals came wandering to the town. They much preferred to the secluded woods nearby. Suddenly, the bunny stopped its funny dance and looked me right in the eyes. Its beady blue eyes returned my gaze, and then it raised its foot and waved. I froze in place. I blinked, but the bunny was still there, watching me for a moment. I thought it gave gazed at me disapprovingly. The strange thing was that the white furred thing looked at me like it could really see me. It felt like it had a conscience and could see into the deepest recesses of my soul. You must be the only person ever of all who isn't filled with Halloween. My sister said, breaking the spell. I jumped. I looked at her and shrugged. When I turned back to the bunny, it had vanished. My parents were already at work since the school was near our house. We walked back and forth every day, but that was fine by me. So I loved to walk and see the town early night, before the general hustle and bustle started. 
I must have been born in the wrong town, I said. You're mystified by the strange event occurred only moments ago. Could I have imagined it? White bunnies don't just stare at you. But still, I couldn't make up fancy stories on my own. I don't believe in them. What our town lacked in size, it made up with its enthusiasm for Halloween. Every house would be decorated during the holiday. Everyone would be on the street celebrating, even the adults. And with the wrong last name, Dinah giggled. My shoulders tense as I thought of what was c- come during the school. D- what was to come during the school day? Don't remind me, everyone. Always made fun of my last name. This time of year, instead of ringing every time it was pronounced. Hello, Web, our friend. Ellen, Ellen greeted me, as if it to illustrate my point. Not again, I grumbled. She was nice, but she could not resist the urge to make that stereotypical joke. She shrugged, it's Halloween. So I've heard. Ellen, Ellen, Ellen was a slender girl with blonde hair and blue eyes. She'd moved to our town a year ago. She was so social that she fit right in. No one even tried to mock her. Diane and Ellen kicked it off immediately, and from that moment they didn't see Diana without Ellen. The two were inseparable. We didn't have much in common, but I hung out with her for company. For the company, she was easy to like, and always made sure everyone was happy. As we headed to our classes, the teasing continued. It's a miracle no one ended up punched in the face. It's Halloween, leave them be. Diana said, and I growled. Sitting at my desk for the first class, I gazed at the window, trying to forget the taunts of the children. While staring at the bushes of our school grounds, I saw a white dot jumping out of them, squinting. I realised it was a white bunny that stood on the front legs and looked directly at me. Another one? I wonder about but it raised its paw. There was no room for doubt, unless there was more than one. I stared at with my mouth gaping. Good morning, class, the teacher's cell voice boomed, startling me out of my reverie. Everyone settle down. Today we said it, shaking my head. I tried to shove the bunny's strange behaviour away, focus on the lesson. It couldn't be the same bunny, could it? Bunnies don't wave unless it was something new. Of testing for separation. I've seen it in my dick, tonic toys in the mall during the Christmas. They could have adapted them to Halloween as well. Relieved, I smiled reassured and listened to the, te- the teacher explaining the complicated formulas. For a moment, I thought, really thought, no, that was completely ridiculous. Thankfully, the day went by so fast. I thought someone must have pushed the fast forward button. On the school, Diana chatted excitedly about our costumes, accessories we would wear. During being the younger of the two of us, she was able to enjoy a normal life without worrying about exams. I envied her for that, but at least I would be free once the exams ended. Free to leave, and my only plan was to move to the city, but they didn't care about Halloween. I also loved the gloves she bought. They, they, you'd actually made me buy, I corrected her, drenching clenching my jaw. They match your, your amulet perfectly, Diana said, ignoring my interruption. It's not an amulet, it's a necklace, I said, emphasising my words. I never took off a silver necklace with purple burger gone. Stone my grandmother gave me. She passed away when I was ten, and wherein it made me feel close to her. Somehow, whenever I felt lonely, I rubbed a stone and somehow I felt my grandmother's hand touching my shoulder. What's it giving me strength? My grandmother had passed away, but I still felt her presence in this house. Some rainy days I thought I could see her in her favourite armchair near the fire, knitting with her electric blue yarn. I would call her a strafferent story about alternative universes, the creatures found in books. Immediately, the stories are so much better than the books. It's an amulet, Diana said decisively. I said not to comment on the subject. As I was no mo- no mood for an argument. All right, whatever. We have to hurry and get ready for the All Hallows Eve possible, Diana said, quickening her pace. I rolled my eyes. Right, the festival was tonight. Emmerfell was probably one of the largest celebrations in the world, and people from countries we never even knew existed flooded the town and came to attend. I didn't understand why there was such a fuss about it. 
It was just a fake celebration with food. Christmas was more meaningful, or Halloween worship, things that didn't really actually exist. When we turned into our street, our house stood still and proud among the others, greeting us. A small fence surrounded our garden where we used to play hopscotch. When it rained, it made off. We made our famous mud pies. At the far end of the treehouse, we used to play lonely days and still standing. But since we grew up, we stood alone and abandoned. Big windows I used to stare out of, trying to catch sight of the small rainbows of blue gabled roof, where our kite got stuck for about that one year. Where the things I thought made our house unique. Our household had three bedrooms, even if the outside looked bigger. Diane and I still shared a room, which bothered me sometimes, especially when we had a fight. Our parents had a honey baked room, as Diana called it. The chocolate brown was for the guests. The kitchen was with orange wheels was mum's charity, which she cooked to magic, as Dad called it. Two bathrooms made the things go fast in the mornings. Our blue living room was always there to welcome our guests. It's great we had a house with a garage, because in our neighbourhood it was very difficult to find a place to park. Dad used it as a storage room too. Every room had a fireplace. I was thankful for that because it made the cold bearable in the winter. The house dated some generations back, but I liked it streamlined yet elegant style. We pushed the blue door and found our parents preparing the house for Halloween. Dad was sitting up, uh, setting up the lanterns. I noticed a paper trail on the floor. I imagine he tried to you make paper decorations and failed again. Every year Dad tried to create a craft a giant Halloween decoration, but always failed due to his wild imagination. Didn't comply in logical terms. Hello, girls, Mum called from the kitchen. Hi, Mum, I greeted back and entered the book kitchen that had permeated, that was permeated with smells. Mum was in her apron like a witch. She was cooking three different meals at once. I didn't know how she could manage a feat such as this. This is pure magic, not the silly costumes. People wore and ran round like crazy. I cast a glance at the decorated living room. My hunt, shoulders hunched. Every corner had a Halloween lantern. Decoration is something that reminded me of this unbearable celebration. Even as candle- chandelier. Every year with the same silly decorations. Oh, will this madness ever stop? I remember seeing my expression gave me a hug. Oh, come on, it's just one night, yes, we thought. It'll be fun, and who knows? You might meet somebody. She winked and continued stirring the food. I sighed and went up to my room to get ready. While I was downstairs, Diana had transformed her room into a Halloween ball. Paper exploded from every side of the room, where purple lanterns hung from the ceiling. The only thing missing was a vampire fairy. Disgusted, I averted my gaze and quickly put on my black jeans and a skirt that said boo. Shirt, uh, on a shirt that said boo. Don't forget to put your, on your gloves, Diana said. Mirtising from a corner with a goth ballerina co- co- costume. She looked like part of the decoration as well. My face morphed into a deep scowl. I put the gloves on only so she, would, uh, so she could forget about it. With the first glance, I planned to remove them. The gloves didn't match her outfit, no matter what she said. See, they match your amulet. Again with the amulet. Let's just go. I said, eager to get this over with. We headed downstairs where our parents were always waiting. Come on, girls, Mum dressed as a witch. Called out and I wondered how she managed to get her costume on so fast. Then I ran down and I followed, dragging on my feet. Last year, I remembered my, myself. Last year, then it would be over. Mum had a long black dress paired with a black velvet pointy hat. In her hand, she held a broom. I was certain she had the same broom we had in our yard last year. Her makeup was a purple glittery mix. I thought if anyone saw her in the dark, he'd run scared. Dad, like me, was not totally enthused about Halloween, but he did. He did. He simply did his bet it to please Mum. Green cape was draped over his shoulders, combined with a green shirt and his jeans. I imagine he's trying to look like a superhero. Music seeped through the door. And children squeed in joy. I sighed and opened the door as I prepared for one of the most boring nights of my life. We 
we arrived at Town Square where the fun had just begun. Children were tricked or treating. Some adults were dressed in, dress, dancing or having a drink. Nevertheless, everyone was dressed up, enjoying the celebration. Party lanterns shaped as witches, pumpkins and bats hung from the trees. Banners from the town's insignia are sealed with for cross and shield with cross sunflower and, and, and painted uh, paintbrush adorned with rubber bats and fake cobwebs were draped behind two lampposts jack-o'-lanterns each neatly carved were neatly arranged throughout the square making the square seem as bright as day if everyone was ha- having fun I took a plate with finger food and sat on a bench avoiding the plastic spiders that dangling from it if there was anything I hated, it was spiders. I looked down at my plate, containing witch fingers, creepy eyeballs and sussy mummies. I held and chewed down my food, pretending it was spaghetti, or watching people dance and shouting in delight. Are you having fun? Diana asked when she saw me going for a drink. She hadn't stopped dancing since we arrived. It had been ridiculously long hours since we left the house. So no, I replied doubtfully. I pointed at the crowd. Look at them. Those costumes don't even look real. Diana looked, shook her head, and gave me a disbelieving look. They're not supposed to look real. Then what's the point, Violet? Forget it. I'm going for a walk. Upset, I waved her off and left a quick space. I didn't understand the excitement over Halloween or why everyone was so inclined to celebrate this made-up, make-believe holiday. I threw my gloves aside as if... an. It, as it was another reminder of this silliness. Rustling in the bushes would pull me from my faults. I stood alert. But it was a, only, a bun, but only a bunny appeared. The bunny stared at me, then waved, making me stop dead in my tracks. I took a closer look at it. But no mechanical voice came out of it, nor lights from its eyes. Its real bunny waved at me. I'm losing my mind, I murmured. A bunny beckoned me only one last time and took off. Curious. I followed it. Maybe it was just a prank. And I was losing my mind over nothing. Alice in Halloween. I said under my breath. Cautiously, I strode behind it. But the bunny continued its way. It didn't be appear afraid of me in its slightest. It came to stop and looked at the gap where our town ended. Like it calculated the distance. It used to be a bridge and led to the next town. But it had been destroyed in every place. And may have deemed it better not to do reroute from the city centre. Bring more tourists in. Now that human presence had gone, nature had fried and turned this part of the land into a small canyon. The view was breathtaking, and without the city decorations, it looked peaceful. Carson looked back at the bunny. I managed to catch it just at the time to jump and disappear into the void. Bunny, I yelled in shock. They approached the edge of the gap. Well, I was wondering, was it stupid? Didn't it see the gap? Well, I tried to understand what on earth was going had happened. The ground started vibrating. Earthquake! I don't know why a door appeared in front of me. It was just a regular stained oak door, standing in what had previously been completely empty space. I looked around, but no one was there. Curiously, he won me over. So I pushed the door, but it didn't open. It needed a key. Where do I find the key? And why do, why do I even care? I, I said aloud. This is uh, ridiculous. But it was odd. I... Uh, that, but it was odd. I wanted to open the door. It felt like of uttermost poisons. I opened that door, like my life depended on it. Peering, I looked at the door, trying to discover what secrets were left behind. Trying to discover what secrets were held behind his rough surface and leaned in. Keyhole formed a strange shape, meaning the normal keys didn't, wouldn't fit yet. Something familiar. The shape reminded my necklace, so I pulled it from my neck. That's when I noticed it glowing intently. The closer I got to the, to the door, the no intense it got. It wouldn't, couldn't be, I thought. I shrugged and placed the necklace in the keyhole. It fit all together just like a puzzle. Clicking into place, the door creaked as it opened. What do you know, Diana was right. It is an amulet. I mused and ma- imagined the satisfied satisfaction on her face when I had told her. When I told her about it, I peered inside, but I could see nothing, only emptiness. I couldn't understand why there would be a door staying in there, nor that it would 
nor that it would reveal emptiness. A strong wind blew, pushing me forward. I fell into hole. I screamed as I fell. After seeing I was falling for quite some time, I gathered the, the courage to look down. A carefully distance was like a ten-story drop, which terrified me even more because my chances of making out this alive had become very slim.